Right, let's do this. Hello. I'm here, and I am Jeremy Parrish, and I'm going to play Super Mario 64 because as of, I don't know, like four or five hours ago, the game officially turned 20 years old uh, in Japan. The game was released June 23rd, 1996, and somehow, inexplicably, that was 20 years ago. So, anyway, um, rather than contemplate mortality, I'm just going to play this game because it was revolutionary, groundbreaking, changed everything. Uh, yeah. What a, what a game. What a gosh darn game. I don't know that the N64 really lived up to the spectacle and promise of the N64. Certainly, no other game let me distort Mario's nose as he spun about. Uh, or anyone's nose, really, that I can think of. I'll give him bizarre, misshapen skull issues. Right. Anyway, so hi, I'm Jeremy Parrish. You're watching a US streamer special production. This would have that CBS dun 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 with the like rotating rainbow letters if I could do that, but I can't. So instead, I'm just going to play some Mario. Um, yeah, I, uh, like most people, I didn't play this when it came out in Japan. And I can say most people, not just most Americans, because the N64 didn't really sell that well in Japan. Um, <clears throat> I remember the first time I saw the N64, I was in... Uh, I... It was in Europe somewhere. I, I went to Prague to do a summer study program. And it might have been in London? I don't know, it was kind of at the end of the trip when we went to a couple of different places uh, following our studies in Prague. But I just remember, yeah, I think it was in London, I saw it in a display kiosk in the High Street. That's a term you can use when you're talking about stores in London, High Street. It makes you sound very British. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the, uh, the system was kind of set up in a tiny little TV. It was probably like a 12-inch TV in the window. Um, and I just remember seeing it and thinking, wow, that looks really cool, I want to play that, but of course I couldn't because it was in a window, and I wasn't allowed to play it. Uh, and I certainly wasn't going to pay, I think, the $500 they were asking for the game system, so instead of playing it, I just waited another, I don't know, like month and a half, two months before it came to the US, and then I saw the game at a t Toys R Us kiosk, and messed around in this area for about five minutes. And I looked at my girlfriend at the time and said, I'm going to buy this game system. And she said, okay. She was okay with that. She was more of a Sega person, though. Like When we discovered emulation back in 1990... Or summer 1996, right around the time that I went to Europe, um, I showed it off to her and she was like, oh, can I play Alex Kidd? I was like, not on INES. Uh, but we did find a Master System emulator, and she played Alex Kidd. And I said, oh, this, this relationship's never going to work out. So we're not together anymore. And I found a nice lady who doesn't even play video games. She does like Castlevania for some reason, though. So anyway, um, that's my story, and it's totally irrelevant. <clears throat> but yeah, like just seeing this little bit at Toys R Us. Why, why won't you talk to me, Toad? Talk to me. There we go. Um... Seeing this at the Toys R Us kiosk definitely made me say, I need to own this game. Also, there was the Shadows of the Empire game that was coming to N64. That was that was also almost as big a reason for me to own an N64, because I was like super back into Star Wars at that point. Uh, I you know, loved it as a little kid, and then it came back, and I was like, yes, I'm on top of this. I'm ready for this. And then I actually saw Shadows of the Empire in action and ended up never buying it. Actually, I don't know if I've ever really played it aside from a demo kiosk. Uh, so, that's my, again, totally irrelevant story. So, this Mario game was completely different than anything that had come before, not just because of the 3D element of it, which of course was a big deal, but because um, the design of it was so different. And I don't mean, like, you know, uh, the design in the sense of the 3D, I mean the structure of the game. Uh, you start out in that open sandbox area where, where I was jumping around and acting like an idiot, and uh, 
that was uh, kind of an introduction to moving around in 3D space. And Nintendo was really smart to kind of just create. Oh, come on, Mario Punch! God. Uh, to create a uh, you know sort of an introduction to this entirely new way of playing that uh, kind of gave players a no stress introduction, a uh, chance to get get kind of get the ropes of moving in 3D space uh, with no threats and you know get jump around, climb on stuff, swim, like everything you can do practically in there except fight is uh, in that opening area outside the castle. Nice, I just blew up a water balloon with a bob bomb. Never done that before. Oh! I'm getting cocky. I gotta stop that. Uh, anyway, yeah, so some really great design choices here. Like, Nintendo realized this is a totally different kind of video game experience than we've ever designed before. So let's be gentle to players and uh, give them a chance to Get the gr get get a, get a handle on stuff, uh, especially that terrible 3D camera. The key is just the worst. Um, but you know, the, even even the camera, even though it's easy to complain about the camera, which is pretty terrible by modern standards. Uh, how many games back then had not only 3D cameras but working user controllable 3D cameras? I mean, that was kind of a that was kind of a big change. Uh, and even though the the N64's C buttons are nowhere near as good as a uh, as a right analog stick for controlling cameras, um, it made a big difference in uh, in how the game played. And you know, because it was so different, uh, they actually built in a video game sort of explanation, a diegetic explanation, if you will. Oh, Mario, watch out! Uh, you're not. It's, it's not a a, an abstract camera, it's actually a literal camera. You saw at the beginning with Lakitu flying around carrying a camera, apparently he decided, eh, I don't want to uh, throw spinies at Mario anymore. Probably because that would be really disruptive and difficult in 3D space. So instead, they turned Lakitu into a cameraman who's following around basically doing a news report on uh, Super Mario's exploits in this bizarre space. Oh, I guess that doesn't automatically start up. There we go. Hello. Big bomb. Uh, so, yeah. Just, um, like, really smart, conscious design choices in this game that really helped sell Mario 64. Um, and there's, there's all kinds of stuff here. Like, this boss is just ridiculous. It's so kind of pointless. He just waddles around slowly. But the idea here is to teach players how to... Uh, grapple things, which of course comes in uh, to be essential when you fight Bowser at the end of the game, and also at the middle of the game. Uh, and in case you weren't kind of clear on what you had to do with Bowser, it actually shows off the final battle in the demo mode, uh, the attract mode, before the game starts. So it kind of gives away a lot, but uh, this is sort of your training wheels, like developing skills that you'll need later. Uh, and it's not that easy because of the weirdness of the camera. And you can be a jerk and try to cheat. You're just supposed to throw this guy to the ground, but you can throw him over the side because that's kind of a thing people do in Mario 64 is throw things over the sides of, of cliffs. Anyway, he's like, no, that's not cool. Mario's first adventure in 3D and already he's a low-down cheating scumbag. Terrible. So he'll, uh, if you let him grab you, then he'll pick you up and throw you off the side of the mountain. So it's it's kind of understandable if he does that, that you would want to throw him off the side of the mountain. Kind apparently honor only goes one direction in this battle. But anyway, this is uh, again like one of the world's easiest boss battles ever. So uh, I guess you have to throw him three times because it's a Nintendo game and you have to do a thing three times to beat a boss. That's the Nintendo way. So he does get a little faster at this point, but not that much faster. Once he starts walking, he's very slow to pivot. There we go. And in case you weren't clear on the fact that you'll have to beat Bowser by grabbing his tail and throwing him, the first boss in the game actually tells you how to beat the final boss. Uh, so... It's, it's kind of giving away a lot, but, you know, compared to kind of the, the tutorials Nintendo used in, 
in uh, like Wii games and DS games, where it was just over the top and just shut up please already, just let me play the game. Like this is great. It just kind of throws you into the 3D and it trusts in your ability to figure things out. And then, you know, there is kind of some extra pointers if you take the time to read the text. But um, from here, it's it's kind of open. Like, you keep collecting stars, and uh, as you gather stars, you can open up new spaces to explore. Uh, for instance, I can go back into the bob -omb battlefield, but I can also open up a door over here. Yes, with one star. So that's kind of cool. It's just... Uh, this sort of open sandboxy style game that was really different from anything that had come before. I mean, how many 3D platformers were there when this game came out? I hope it's okay that I'm just rambling at the mouth. I have a lot to say about this game. Um, anyway, I mean, before this there was... what? There was Jumping Flash, which is a really cool game and I like it a lot. And it did some really smart things that other people wouldn't figure out until like Metroid Prime. So that's awesome. But, I mean, that that game really feels like uh, kind of amateur hour compared to this. It just wasn't nearly as advanced. Um, so you get to this level, and uh, Nintendo's showing off the second feature of the N64. Besides the 3D, you also have the analog controls. And this is something that Mario hasn't really had in subsequent games, this ability to creep around. And there's a, there's a gentle little lullaby isn't that nice? So peaceful. Anyway, then you kill the guy. It's kind of it's kind of dickish. What can you say? Um, I actually uh, got to see that lullaby live uh, at the Mario 30th anniversary concert last fall in Tokyo, and I had never really paid much attention to the song before. But once I heard it played live, I was like, oh, that's really that's really nice. They gave it a vocal line, a woman saying. It was very relaxing. I did not fall asleep, however. I was much too enraptured by the live performance. There was like this drummer, this girl who I think is actually younger than this game that we're playing and watching right now, and she was amazing. She's like the best drummer in Tokyo or something. It's crazy. Um, anyway, that's not relevant to this game, but it's just a random memory I have. This is a stream of consciousness adventure through Mario 64. So here's where you really kind of need to start fussing with the camera because um, walking in straight little lines is very difficult when the camera's not lined up right. That is kind of the downside of the analog controls is that it's really easy to sort of drift off uh, the axes of controls. So you spend a lot of time sort of fussing with the camera. There's not fine control, it's the, the digital C buttons as opposed to the, uh, the right stick of modern video game systems. Mm -hmm. Quiet, don't wake up the plant. Yeah, right, anyway. So you, you uh, really need to get a, a grip on the uh, the camera controls for this. And it, gets, it gets more difficult later. I think some of the later levels in the game become sort of unreasonably difficult because of the, the awkward camera design of the game. And it's, it's hard to hold that too much against Mario because, I mean, how many games were there like this at the time? Oh, that's right, none. None whatsoever. So you have this, like, game it's a totally pioneering design, and I'm not going to get that one up. Um, I think it's allowed a few little quirks, but it would be nice for them to, I hate to say this because it's such a tired idea, but a remake of this game would actually be pretty great. And I'm not talking about Mario 64 DS, which was kind of the wrong sort of remake in my opinion. Like it, it made the play control a lot less free, and not the play control, but the structure, where you had to use different char specific characters to get through specific situations. Uh, kind of, kind of lost a little bit of the original game's openness and charm. Oh, see, there's another instance of uh, weird camera happenings. Ah, yes. Okay, so another boss, and this one's also kind of broadcast. Not, not so much by what he says, although there is that, uh, but also by the fact that you just fought little tiny versions of him. So it kind of gives away the surprise. 
How about that? I managed to damage him by doing the exact same thing that I did to the other thwomps. But you know, it's it's cool that they were interpreting uh, classic Mario concepts, uh, 2D concepts like thwomps into uh, into 3D. It's like, how does this work? Mario himself had to undergo a lot of adjustment uh, to work in 3D because uh, you know just the the typical controls for Super Mario World or whatever wouldn't really work in 3D. They, they carried over some things like flight, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a different kind of Mario, one who punches bad guys instead of really jumping on them. There is some jumping, but more punching. And there's these little guys. You may recognize them from every Mario RPG ever, now that they're the only NPCs that are put into Mario RPGs. Um, so let's see, I have two stars. I can't remember if there's a two-star door. There might be. But I can also go back to bob -omb Battlefield, or I can take on Womp's Fortress. So many options. That's three. Okay, that's not working out. Um, and then, of course, there's this little place where you can find the mystery of Luigi, who's, uh, I believe, coming to Earth in the year 2401. If that's not, if that's, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go check out Luigi. Um, let's see, it is uh, quarter past the hour, so hello. Welcome to this live stream in which I attempt to solve the mystery of Luigi and his... Uh, you know, it's going to be like a rapture, basically. He comes back to Earth and, and takes the the good people up to Luigi Heaven, and then while Luigi claims the souls of the uh, the, the sin sinners. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, I'm Jeremy Parrish. This is a U.S. streamer special retro edition to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Super Mario 64. And I'm playing Super Mario 64. And I don't think I mentioned it before, but I'm playing this as is my habit on um, actual hardware, an N64 hardware with a cartridge. Uh, it's upscaled to 720p for high, delicio uh, high definition deliciousness, but it is, uh, it is actual hardware. So if it looks a little choppy or a little smeary, that's because I'm not giving it any embellishments. Like even the virtual console version of the game doubles the resolution. Uh, from 320 by 240 to 640 by 480. Um, and so, yeah, here's here's kind of how Nintendo made use of these spaces that they built. Uh, they give you multiple objectives in each, and depending on which star you select as you complete the game, you can see different things, meet different people, do different challenges. Uh, the levels change a little bit from star to star, uh, so that's cool. Um, what was I saying? Oh, right. The uh, the fact that Virtual Console kind of embellishes the resolution, smooths things out. Most emulators don't, don't only um, change the resolution, but will also give you options to change the textures. Uh, where's my C button? It's not working. Come on now. Why will my C buttons not work? What is happening? There we go. Let's zip, zoom, zoom out. <sighs> okay, so I may lose this race because for some reason my camera buttons are not uh, responding to my commands. There we go. Okay. Let's see if I can beat that jackass now. It's gonna be rough. Especially if I fall off the side. That super oh bad news. I was just going to say that uh, that super jump Mario does is pretty handy for skipping past uh, rolling balls, but I guess uh, it's when I say things like that that I blunder into an obstacle. Okay, so I won despite myself, and 
despite the camera being wonky. And now we just wait for the turtle to arrive. Oh, of course, now the camera works. Hello, turtle. Oh, there you are. Well, there we go. Confirmation that Mario is, in fact, human. A human blur, in fact. So there's another star. And something uh, totally pointless you can do is just completely ignore the stars and uh, do other things. Like, you can get a star here to appear and then go get a different star, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. It's not like that race was particularly fun. So, uh... Yeah, so I just claimed it, and it's on to a door with three stars. So the uh, the Mario game prior to <coughs> prior to Mario 64 was uh, most people think of it as you know Yoshi's Island or Super Mario World if you want to be more of a stickler. But it was actually Donkey Kong 94, and I feel like that game was kind of practice for this one. Not not so much in terms of design, but uh, Mario had some of the same skills you see here in this game in uh, in Donkey Kong, like the triple jump and everything. So clearly they were kind of iterating on some ideas in the form of uh, a remake for Game Boy. Kind of an interesting little unexpected place to, uh, to find invention. So here in this level, you can of course go drop penguins off the side of mountains, but I think for now I'm just going to drop in here and try to do the slide and try not to die. I'm not very good at this slide. But we'll see what happens. I'm playing live, so of course I'm going to fail horribly. That's just kind of how it goes. Didn't even get that arc. Shameful. Then again, I could just take the shortcut and cheat like mad, but there is a really tough little part at the end of the shortcut, so I've got to be careful for that. Oh no, I'm thinking of something else. Never mind. Okay, so putting a lie to the claim that cheaters never prosper, I just cheated and prospered not only by oh, getting hurt, but also by getting a 1-up, and then, of course, the obligatory star. So, where did my star go? There it is. What's up, Mom? Talk to you later. So, uh, this game has been hacked a lot. There are a lot of mods out there. I know Bob did a stream several months back. It was called, like, Chaos Edition or something, where someone, uh, I don't even know what that was. I need to go watch that stream sometime. But, um, I, I'm curious to know if those hacks actually work on original hardware. I think you might be able to use a patched ROM on an EverDrive and uh, do weird things on hardware, but most likely you'll probably, most likely you'll probably just freeze up the hardware. And that's never any fun. So let's go back to bob -omb Battlefield because it's easy. And oops. Uh, no one, no one likes watching someone butt their head in frustration against a difficult challenge on a live stream. Well, at least I don't think they do. So I think this was the first Mario game to turn uh, some recurring villains into uh, peaceable characters. I don't, I don't think you'd ever been able to talk to uh, monster NPCs before. So that's an interesting little tidbit. Um, anyway, I'm inside a cannon. I can aim myself wherever I like to go. You can tell this is an old game because the controls are inverted. Pressing up and it goes down. Down and it goes up. How 90s of them. Yeah, that was a terrible shot. Congratulations to me for shooting myself to frickin' nowhere. Uh, but this, this little challenge is to kind of figure out the location of all the 
cannons in the stage and make use of those to reach a high point that can't be uh, can't be traveled to otherwise. Oh, Mario, what's wrong with you? You lost your ability to climb. There we go. So I don't think I can get to that island yet. I think it might be too high, but let's see what happens. I think I overshot it, actually. Yes, I sure did. I, like, seriously overshot it. Oh, but I did a nice job of shooting myself right to the, uh, to the next cannon, so that's good. Let's see if I can overshoot this one. Alright. actually did it on my first try. That's a rarity. And there we go. Another star. Here we go. So it's like the chat is lively. Hello, everyone. I just now looked over at the screen to see what people are saying, and they're saying a lot. And they're talking about the Super Mario movie for some reason. I don't know if I can necessarily approve of that. The shenanigans. Oh, tutorials. Hidden rather than mandatory. Novel. Uh, I don't think I've gone up to that door up above, so let's go back to that. I think that's the slide. Need another slide because it's such a great idea. They had to use it twice, or more than that, actually. Oh, that didn't work out so well. I do kind of like that that's just a mystery. It doesn't really explain itself. The obvious thing to jump into doesn't work. But you keep stumbling around until you figure it out, because why would they have a door that leads to an empty, pointless room? So this kind of, uh, this section kind of embodies the, the ethos of this game of just, like, putting all kinds of secrets in here. I think it's even called the Princess's Secret Slide. Um, and just letting players figure it out themselves. And this really is a different kind of Mario game than any other, uh, it's, you know, even Super Mario Sunshine was pretty different, just in the way it's designed so that there's all these different spaces that you return to and kind of iterate on and explore. Like, you really get a sense of the lay of the land in all these levels. You get a feel for, kind of like, they, they become real spaces to you in a sense. Like a home. A home away from home. And this is probably a really bad idea, but I'm going to go here and go swimming on a live stream. Because swimming is always so much fun in video games. But I mean, I've been playing for half an hour now, and I've been to, what, like four different worlds? So there's a lot of variety kind of uploaded at the front, or front-loaded, or whatever. Um, and I think there's, what, 15 different stages total, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh... Yeah, that's, there, there's a lot to do. Well, I guess I have to beat some sort of bomb or something here. It's been a while since I've played this far into the game. I usually just kind of muck around in the first few stages and say, okay, that's fine, I'll finish this again some other time, and then I never do. And I'm sure this is going to be just like that. I'm going to play for an hour and then never come back to this playthrough. Because that's the live streamer way. seems important. Oops, Mario. I guess I was supposed to get that red coin, but I didn't. I'm tricky like that. 
one of the interesting uh, design choices in the game is that you know you have your your health meter turns into an air meter when you're in the water, and if I'm not mistaken, if I'm remembering right, um, if you're low on health, you can jump into the water and your your air will fill up, and then when you jump out of the water, I think your health restores all the way. I, I might be making that up. I don't know. It's been 20 years, you know. And I'm, I'm forgetting a lot. Uh, I just remember something to that effect. Uh, coins also serve as, as health. Just the idea of a health meter in Mario was, was very strange. Like, they knew they were working in a different medium, uh, so they changed up the workings. Am I, am I going in circles? Did I just backtrack? I actually have gotten totally mixed up here. I think that's where I started. Right! Thank you, great camera work. Okay. Yes, so let's go in a direction that I haven't been before. And I actually don't remember what I'm supposed to do here, but that's uh, that's okay. Mario 64 is very much a game about just kind of farting around and figuring stuff out. I know that's sort of an anthem to the concept of live streams, but hopefully uh, those of you who are watching won't mind me farting around. So I guess I need to dive and go down into some subaquatic spaces. Look at all that stuff down there. If you are just in turn it, tuning in, we have no good words. Um, I'm Jeremy Parrish. You're watching US Gamers Super Mario 64 20th 20th, yes, let's not get ahead of ourselves. 20th anniversary stream. Um, system in 64 and Super Mario 64 turn 20 as of June 23rd, which is tomorrow for Americans. And today, for those, anyone who might happen to be watching in Japan, which is probably no one, uh, but technically, yes, this game launched 20 years ago today in Japan time. Um, and then it came to America at the end of September, and I'm very sorry, Europeans, I have no idea when the game came to you. Probably, like, 1999, just given the delays Nintendo always put into place with its, uh, European localizations. Oh! Not even cool. So jumping does still work on enemies, it's just kind of hard to line it up. So I have ah, slipped underground or underwater to a cave where things are trying to kill me. And uh, I just got electrocuted, so that was fun. Uh, I see what that is. Nope. Alright, let's try it again. One. Is it this one? Nope. I'll figure it out one of these days. Process of elimination. God bless. Let's just assume it's going to be this one over here. Yes. And finally, a thing. Oh, a star. Well, I guess I have figured out the point of this level to find a star. kind of weird thing I remember about Super Mario 64 and the N64 launch was that it actually happened a few days early. It was supposed to take place, I want to say, the September 29th, but uh, I ended up getting mine a couple of days early. Uh, a bunch of places just started selling them early, and I had a reservation at Toys R Us, so I went in to Toys R Us and said, can I have my N64? And they said, okay. So that was cool. Oh, one more star. up with the super jump. But if I remember right, the N64 only launched with two games. There was Mario 64 and Pilot Wing 64. I can't imagine anyone doing that nowadays. Like, even the Wii U, which has been kind of dreadful 
in terms of uh, software, especially for third-party support. Had a ton of games at launch. Uh, all of... Oops. Yikes. Well, that was bad. Um, yeah. I think the performance of those launch games made people say, hey, let's not support this system. And of course, the red coins... This, this, uh, this wasn't the beginning of hunting for red coins. That was in Yoshi's Island. Uh, and I guess you had the dino coins in Mario World before that, but this is the first one where it became like a really uh, deliberate objective. And they took it too far with Mario Sunshine and the blue coins. I've kind of forgotten how lame a lot of the original enemies in this game are. Sort of like uh, the new Super Mario Brothers games, where it's like, really, you guys, this is. You're the ones who came up with Goombas and Shy Guys, and this is the best you can come up with. Apparently, snowmen are indestructible. That's not cool. I actually do not remember where the baby penguin is, but I suppose I should talk to this lady. Or it could be, it could be a man. I, I, uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a penguin parent. Let's use a general, gender neutral term just for you know, to be respectful. Uh, let's grab that red coin. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive that you can pull off tricks like that. Climbing to the top of a tree, standing on your hands, and then doing a, a crazy acrobatic jump over. So let's see what she has to say about this. He, she, it. Oh. That's very unfortunate. Oh, now I can't pick up the baby again. It's even more unfortunate. Samus will be very upset. she just start shouting, The baby, the baby! Maybe I'll just get all the red coins. I don't know. I don't know. I can remember where all the red coins are. Always the challenge. I remember uh, this this lift, the first time I played this game, always made me super nervous because, I mean, well, look at it. Oh, I guess I need to talk to that guy to uh, activate the, uh, the cannon down there, so that's good to know. There is something about the, uh, the sort of 3D spaces in this game that are a little more nerve-wracking than in most other games, and I th think that's because, one, the resolution is kind of low, so everything is sort of chunky and seems a little imprecise. Uh, but then also the you know the controls are still a little loose. They haven't quite perfected that. The camera is a little uh, fussy to use. Uh, I think uh, it's kind of a function of technology. And there's one more red coin, and I don't know where it is. And I should go down and talk to that cannon guy. Get him to the top part of the stage. Oh, no, that was not what I wanted to do. Oh, my precious red coins. I hate them. Damn it. That is why I get super nervous in this game. Alright, let's go try to find the damn penguin again. Seems like I went about this level all wrong. Clearly I was supposed to start from the top and work my way down.
And of course, the coolest video anyone ever made about this game was the, the Japanese people, I think it was a couple of guys, who uh, were trying to avoid collecting a 1-up, and it became this bizarre uh, horror experience where the 1-up was like the nemesis, and it would just chase them inexorably. Oh, that wasn't good. The idea of getting an extra life was never quite so frightening. Dear Blue Coins, lead me to the baby penguin. No, that wasn't what I wanted at all. Nor was that. Good God. Hey, I know, let's try a different stage. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Alright, so, I think we've seen enough of the snow level. Let's play a level that's fun. Maybe I should go back to my safe space in bob -omb Battlefield. Or... what should I do? I could go to the Thwomp level again. The Thwomp Fortress, I think? Yes. I'm sure this will be easy, whatever it is I'm trying to do. Very, very quiet. We're hunting piranha plants. That was my Dr. Light impersonation. Yeah. Mario, you seem to be stuck. There we go. And they duplicated the worst part of Double Dragon for NES here. Very unfortunate. No, no, Mario! Oh, Mario! Why you gotta even do a thing, Mario? Man. The stream was going pretty well, and then suddenly, it's not. Alright, we'll give this one more try, and then maybe I'll weep silently to myself. Uh, I would like to get to the... I think the room with the big star that requires eight stars. That's Bowser's showdown, right? The first showdown, so let's see if I can make it to that before the stream ends. But man, at this rate, it's not looking so good. I can't help but notice that the thwomps sound very constipated. I think this was also the first canon Mario game to give Mario a voice. Mario had uh, lots of non-canonical voices, but I don't think we're counting Captain Lou Albano or... Uh, I think there was a game that he had, he had a voice in somewhere, but uh, this is the first one that counts. And uh, they've kept the same voice actor for the past 20 years, Charles Martinet. So, uh, that's a pretty good tenure. I don't know who does Peach's voice anymore. It used to be Leslie Swan, but I don't know if she's still with Nintendo. But just the, the fact that there was voice acting in here, even even a little bit, uh, was kind of a novel touch that, that definitely gave it that sense of an interactive cartoon, sort of brought Mario to life in an interesting way. Um, And then this, this this level of voice acting is about as far as Nintendo has taken voice acting 20 years later. Though there was some actual dialogue in the Zelda demos, so maybe, maybe the times they are a change. So that's right, this is where I play Castellian. Oh, and there's bullets flying at me. Hence the fortress part, I guess. Wow, I totally forgot all of this was up here. I always play like the first level of the Thwomp stage and then nip off someplace else. But here we are. In a uh, kind of limestone fortress with... Uh oh, camera obstructions. Very nice. Loving it. Yeah, 
And I hope this is the top of the fortress because I'm tired of climbing. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we can move along to uh, that other stage. And, oh wow, it's already uh, quarter till 5 p.m. here. So that means uh, I'm heading into the final stretch of this anniversary stream. Thanks everyone who's been watching, and it seems like a pretty steady stream, despite the fact that I died a whole lot during the uh, third segment just now. I'm sure it's not going to get any better because this uh, showdown with Bowser is kind of kind of tough. Maybe I'm thinking of the final Bowser stage, but I seem to remember this one uh, being pretty pretty rough. Oh, that was interesting. I. Uh, forgot that there was a pitfall right there and just randomly jumped and I hit a wall. This game cheats. But yeah, this is where the game starts to say, like, okay, I think you're so good, why don't you try some platforming challenges? And I don't even know what that switch did, but I'm nervous to find out. Whoa! Run around, little guy. I know he'll get there eventually. Actually, maybe he won't. Uh, the Goombas seem to have trouble cornering in this game. Should probably have their transmissions checked out. Or steering problems. Did he just run off the edge? Okay, no, he didn't. That would have been really sad. Yeah, this is my one up that I could go creating into a pit to collect. Yes. Always a pleasure. Let's not forget the importance of first-person mode, so you can see what lies ahead, and really put yourself in Mario's world, and also up his uh, rectal column. Uh, I can live without that. It's kind of pointless for me to collect red points at this point, since I passed up at least one before. This looks fun. Ah. Man, I'm having a really tough time sort of judging depth in this game. They're okay. Hopefully I've reached a checkpoint of some sort. And I don't want to go back that way. It seems kind of worse. <sighs> My kingdom for an optimal camera angle. Oh, no, 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 Mario! Oh. oh, camera, why do you hate me? Mamma mia! Oh, lordy. Oh, oh, can you can you smell my salty tears? Oh, that's what this is for. Just to get the ah ha ha, Mario. And bring the asbestos trousers. <sighs> well, this may be about as far as this live stream makes it, because I don't think anyone wants to watch me die horribly on the stage over and over again. Then again, I don't know. Weird things are popular on the internet. 
if I died horribly over and over again while screaming, I could, you know, hit like a million Twitch views. That was nerve-wracking. Oh, oh! Oh, my finger slipped off the button. That was terrible. Mamma mia! Well, with you, tiny red coin, I don't love you anymore. I love how much of uh, jumping in this game is just kind of guesswork. Like, I think this is the right place to jump. Can't really tell. But again, it's not fair to be too harsh. We're still figuring a lot of things out. But I definitely will not be doing Rainbow Ride or TikTok Clock on this live stream. It's been a long time since I touched those, but I remember those being just some truly hateful exercises and platforming. So, uh, you'll forgive me if I abstain. Aha! How about that? There we go. And I gotta jump across there. Jump as opposed to just falling off. Yes, right. Very good. Uh, so, if I can actually make this jump, then. Really, Mario? Gotta, gotta have some words here. Alright, so I think this slide, or this button, flattens this thing out. Is that right? Stair staircase, yes. It's all coming back to me. All the old pain, all the old sadness. Alright. Well, I made it to the top, and... Maybe I'll do something really embarrassing and die here. Oh, okay, okay yeah. So he, again, reminds you that yes, you defeat him by grabbing him by the tail. This game really was just leaving nothing to chance. I wonder how many times they playtested that, and how many people like found it impossible to uh, figure out what they were supposed to do until they added that in. So, there we go. Uh, what do I hit to make him fly off? No, that wasn't the right way. Closer to the spiked mine. There we go. Well, I got him once. That counts for something, right? Do I have to jump on his belly? Nope. Oh, oh, that was quick. Forgot that he pieced out so so rapidly. Okay, well, I made it to the quote-unquote second half of the game, or I guess second-third? I can't remember exactly what the, what the breakdown is here, but anyway, I have the key. And as we all know from playing Skyward Sword, the key is for opening doors, as Fi reminded us many, many times. And let's see, they go down here, right? Indeed, indeed. Alright, so I'll check out one stage before the end of the stream, which I'll be wrapping up in about five minutes. 
30 stars, that's so many. Let's go see if I can find millions of instructions per second. Which is a really strange name for a rabbit. This does not seem to be a level. Talk to me, Toad. Come on, baby. Give me something. Use your words. Use your words. There we go. Confirmed. Bowser is Michael Jackson. He and his band wrote the book on bad. There we go. Wow, that looks really intimidating. Flames? No, let's not do that. Isn't this where there's that really atmospheric level? The, is it the docks level? It's fire again. I don't want fire. Who likes fire? I don't. So, uh, this underground is a lot more complicated than I remember. Did that just take me back to the beginning of the underground? Oh, thanks for that. Wonderful. Alright, it's been a really, really long time since I've been down to this section of the game. Uh, I mean, we're talking on the order of 20 years. No, that's not true. I, I did play and review the, the DS remake. Um, so I guess it's been like... Still a long time. Alright, let's see what's down here. Hopefully it's something good, as opposed to something lame. There's a lot of uh, running around navigating just to get to... Oh, hey, that's not new levels at all. This is um, the outside of the stage. The Banished Cap Switch Course. Oh, nice. So this is like a Switch Palace. I totally forgot about this. Man. Yeah, I want that. happening in here, and it really makes me frazzled. I was much younger when I played this last. Oh, this is just a bad time. Oh, Mario, goodbye. Well, I guess that's it for me. Um, yeah. So, anyway... That was US Gamer's kind of anticlimactic stream of Super Mario 64 to celebrate its 20th anniversary. I can celebrate my mortality by being so much older and uh, slower about playing this game. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I think we'll probably have a, we'll have a small feature on the N64's anniversary tomorrow on the site, 
and I plan to do a much more in-depth piece for this site and Retronauts once the American anniversary of the N64 comes around. So you can look forward to that if you are the type of person who likes reading about old games and old game systems, and considering that you're here watching some guy play Super Mario 64 20 years after its debut, I'm guessing the answer to that is yes. So thanks for watching and bearing with me, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope it wasn't too shocking and traumatic to see what Mario 64 actually looked like on real hardware without the the tweaks of uh, emulators and everything. I think visually it holds up pretty well. I mean, there's obviously stuff like the trees that rotate with you as you uh, as you spin around because everything's a sprite. But you know, whatever, it's fine. Uh, they, they took some liberties and made a game like no one else had ever made or played before, and it's still it's still fun. A little tricky with the camera, but but fun. So um, yeah, that's a pretty darn good legacy. This game really just kind of changed everything. So I'm done rambling now. I've been talking for like an hour nonstop, and I apologize for that. But thanks for watching anyway. And I'll be back with a stream on Friday, I believe. Uh, that'll be Mega Man 5, so you can look forward to that. 